Okay, this is the column, and we are here at the music hall. Originally, we were supposed to do the interview at a cemetery, but um, Lurch does not know how to use a GPS, and the Addisons did not want to use the backup driver, Lindsay Lohan. Oh, no. so, <laughs> so please welcome Tony Award nominee Douglas Seals and one of Broadway's most gorgeous women, Sarah Gettlefinger. Well, welcome to Dallas. Thank you, Thank you so much. How, the opening night was great. How, how did you feel about the audience reaction last night? It was fantastic. The audiences here have been so generous and so enthusiastic. And, you know, when you're playing a comedy, the laughter and their response really becomes a rhythm that is in the play and that we, we count on as far as, you know, well, you never count on it because it could land like a pancake, but <laughs> <laughs> you hope, but you hope that that laughter will be there and it really energizes you as performers. Yeah, it was a great house last night. It was a fun opening night. We had actually had a few weeks off as a cast. We've had a little bit of a hiatus, so it was uh, really heartening to feel it and we had a good pace going. It was really a great thing. It felt like we were in the zone. It was nice, really nice. From the audience reception, it's not, it really, I mean, we had a great time. Good. It's very, very funny. I mean, it, I mean, I laughed a lot. Yeah, everyone says, we were shocked and, you know, we didn't quite know what to expect. I mean, we knew it was going to be fun, but we didn't know how much fun it was going to be. We get that a lot. Yeah. You both have great, great chemistry. I mean, it, it really does show on stage. And I, I'm doing all research of it. I know that Louisiana, but again, and because of you two starring in the tour, um, Jerry Zachs and the two co-directors of the original kind of fr um, formatted the story more and to give, to show off more the chemistry, the, the sensual, erotic, you know, sexual chemistry that you two have on stage. So how did you create that art going down that path with the characters? Well, we were really fortunate because so often when a show goes out on a Broadway tour, you're just asked to sort of do the cookie cutter version of what was on Broadway. And because they were going to go back to the drawing board and make some changes and reinvestigate some things, it really was the process for us was like being a part of a new show. Really building it from the ground up, uh, doing some trial and error with, you know, does this work, seeing how the audience response was during the preview period. And um, that's a real gift when you are, you know, moving into something that essentially has already been created, but you still get to have that first time process. So the creators got to watch the show on Broadway for about a year and a half, and they had the incredible luxury of saying, gosh, if we got to go back in and rework some things, what would we like to do? And so they had a sense of the changes that they wanted to make. They wanted to recenter the show around Gomez and Morticia. Um, the plot line has to do with Wednesday, our daughter who's grown up and she's met a young boy from a more traditional looking family and the show had been more centered around the young folks and they had decided that while it was a strong storyline for them and they enjoyed it, they wanted to have the center of the show be Gomez and Morticia. So they knew that's what they wanted and they issued us a new script when we began and yet the writers and the composer were in the room when we rehearsed. So changes continued all the time while we were rehearsing, songs were deleted, they realized that the changes that they had begun needed to go throughout the whole show. So they were constantly reworking the, the libretto and new songs were added. There's you in fact got two new songs and then another one in the second act. Right, so there's a, a lot of new material. So anyone who saw the show on Broadway would get to see a, Total a, really a whole new version that's, that's actually even stronger. In fact, the script that they have us doing is the show that will be published now. It's the show that's being done yes, in South America. America. It's yeah. the show that's about to be done in Australia and hopefully in the West End. So um, they're very happy with it and audiences have been really excited. So they had a real luxury of having an extraordinary top-notch cast do it on Broadway, get to watch them and say, oh, well, if we got another shot to go, I can see. So it's like a painter not being done with his canvas. Now, because I've, I've seen both of you actually um, on, on Broadway, but I know that you have a, a wicked sense of humor. So were there any ad-libs that you throw out if the mood takes you? Because last night in the second act, there was a moment when you did the... A John, scene. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have Douglas no idea. I, could, our toes. I couldn't see your reaction, but you kind of turned a little. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I am devoted to the text like Shakespeare. <laughs> no, they're very kind to me. There's a couple of spots where uh, the director and the writers have said, you know, we have an understanding that if I have an inspiration in here, and they're very tight boundaries in terms of time, but 
<laughs> so there's a couple of spots where I like to keep them on their toes, uh, and the cast enjoys it, and it makes it very... What's the line from Forrest Gump, the box of chocolates? You never know no what you're going to get. get. <laughs> so we, we enjoy it. It's All fun. I saw from was your head just kind of moved slightly this way, <laughs> and he turned up, so you went, okay, that was me and you. That was me and you. I spend a lot of time <laughs> looking at my knees to try and not break up laughing. <laughs> Doug, it's fabulous. There's a couple of funny spots. We I, get it. It was, it was very great to see, because, I, you know, um, I love ad-libbing. I, I don't know, shocker. But um, I could tell when there were parts of it, like, okay, you know, the Ohio, yeah, they can feel Ohio it. reference was great. Well, that's not Adam. That's in. After last night, said, you know, with the president, with the debate, debate, it was like perfect, perfect. Yeah, we talk about healthcare. We talk about you texting. Do. <laughs> we talk about Charlie everything Sheen. modern. Charlie Sheen. It's very current. The, so the the libretto is very current, which is fun. Um, and I think one of the great things about the show we've talked about on, on many occasions is that people that want to bring their kids, it's a great show for the whole family. But that they're going to see all the characters that they grew to love when they watch the reruns. Lurch and Grandma and It and Thing, they're all in the show but in a very current setting and, and these guys have a great, wonderful sense of humor that's very now. There's nothing dusty about the show, it's not Cyrano, you know what I mean? It's nothing from the 60s, it's not Sweet Charity, God bless them, that's all great, but it's a very current libretto. Which I think, it, I think it's better for audiences to see a, a new version instead of the same old, you know, paint by number. Yeah, you, know, sure. you want to see something new. That was one of the understandings with the estate of the uh, of the Charles Adams family was that the material be derived from the very original cartoons. It all started with single panel cartoons, and that nothing be based on the television show. So it's all brand new. Now um, we actually all all three of us we've actually crossed paths before, um, and here's where the stalker moment happens as usual. <laughs> um, we actually met at the stage door of Stuart Pimpernel, which was I think by that time 3.0 with Rachel York and Rex Smith. Yeah, that was two, three, four, <laughs> what? I don't remember which edition that was. Wait a minute. That was um, the centennial. 2.0. <laughs> that was 2.0. It was during winter we met I, met, um, I went to the stage door and there was a huge crowd and you were dressed in black with a black turtleneck and we had a, a good professional conversation about the show and about because I really I already I had not seen the show but I already had the C D and your voice is just magnificent. Thank you have you. A, you have a vocal tenor voice that just belts to the back of the wall and just with that vibrato that's perfect underneath it. So Thank you. We had a great conversation, it was very professional. And I said, Oh can we take a picture and you said sure and we hugged and that's where my stupidity came out and I said Oh, you smell real good. And your eyes went, stalker, stalker. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was like, my friend told me who takes the picture went, why did you say that? I don't you say know. I don't I'm know. sure I didn't. I was trying to think, what did I put on? I probably stink. <laughs> no, I you smell very You smell very And then we met again at um, Little Shop for Horse. We oh. played Orange the Dentist, which right. again, great performance. Thank you. And with Sarah, we um, I saw nine when in, when you played Maria with um, oh, Jane. Jane Vanderas and Jane and yes. uh, Mary Street Masterson and Chita Rivera. Yes. And then I went back a year and almost a year later and saw it this time with John Stamos and the late her kid and you were with Carla. Right. And let me tell you, when you came down and you've got, she's got legs for days. For days. <laughs> I mean, I did you say that after you finished uh, Call of the Vatican, there were several wives that kept their husbands with their playbooks. <laughs> That's oh, very oh, kind. And um, your costume in the show here, um, well... <laughs> Not a black turtle there. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I mean, you wonder, it's like, ooh, are the girls going to say hello? Right, I <laughs> know. I, I tell you, it's... It's one of the most beautiful costumes I've ever worn, and not just from the aesthetic side of things. It is extremely scandalous, um, but everything is in place, and it moves beautifully, and it dances beautifully. It, it is um, not as much of a project as you would think it was to keep everybody where they belong. Um, <laughs> it's literally just a great, undergarment that is sewn into the dress that sort of sits on my chest like armor and I've, I've been in many other dance costumes that were much more difficult to move in than this one. Because I just saw your posse so I know that you know. 
Yes. I definitely. So you haven't lived until you've seen her in this costume, yes. trust me. It's well worth it to cry. <laughs> um, I, like, I like to call them my special skills. <laughs> <laughs> they get their own bow. Let's just leave it at they that. They do. They get their own bow. <laughs> Curtain call and spotlight. Um, to end this interview, um, I thought we would have a fun and have do it like they do it John, all John, you pizza. smell so good. Oh, they, Why did I say that? <laughs> oh, God, I shouldn't have said that. Um, I thought we would end it like they do on Inside the Actors Studios on Bravo and have you as Gomez and you as, Mort as Morticia to answer the following questions. Okay. Here's James Limpton moment. Um, Morticia, what sound do you like most to hear? <laughs> Screaming. Gomez? The sound I love to hear more than anything is the wonderful sense of uh, from my wife when we're done making the love. <laughs> what sound do you hate to hear? Laughter. The word no. <laughs> what is your favorite word? Go. My favorite word? My favorite word is... Um, um, <laughs> my favorite word is let's eat. <laughs> and you just had a corny dog. That's right. A Texas corny dog. Yeah. What, um, what, and we can say this, what is your favorite curse word? You gotta go with the big F. <laughs> <laughs> Gomez? Gomez's favorite curse word is definitely merd. <laughs> Everything has a European flavor. What profession would you most like to have if you couldn't be glamorous housewife? <laughs> a mortician, of course. Oh, go met. A downhill skier. <laughs> nighttime. <laughs> Only nighttime downhill skiing with two flaming. <laughs> what profession would you like not to have? A clown. <gasps> I can't believe you said that! I was going to say a circus clown! God, I hate to hear children laughing! We're of one mind. You are, you are. We're inside each other all the time. I mean, inside each other's head. In our actor's studio. In the head. We're inside each other's head. And when you go to the burning gates of hell to meet, you know, your friend, what would you like him to say to you? Well done. I just put on a fresh plate of noodle pudding. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> and, it's, and it's only 12 noon and we're already this, this hyper. It's Douglas from the court, <laughs> John. <laughs> Douglas Seals. He smells good. He smells really good. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. And please come see the Adams Family here at the Music Hall. It is a terrific show. I saw it last night. It's and well worth the John, tell them, if you come to see the show, you get into the Texas State Fair all day for free. That's a $15 value. So come see the show and fill up one s'mores. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. We've already paid homage to the corn dogs. And the corny dogs. <laughs>